How are you doing? I'm Steve Rimmer. I'm just going to go into London and do my first uh, stand-up comedy gig. I'm a bit nervous, but uh, I like to start all my comedy gigs. Well, not all of them. It's the first one I've done, but I'm going to get a, a routine going, get some, you know, everyone's got something going. I'm going to start my with a nice can of beer at a train station. You know what I mean? Hopefully they don't get locked up for it. Oh, that's the best. Oh, I was going to down that, but <laughs> you're all gassy. <laughs> Cheers, anyways. Um, we've got a lovely one for that coming up to you again, slightly unfortunate name, but I'm a bit drunk, so I still want Steve Rimmer! Yeah. Well, uh, that's obviously what everyone wants to do. Uh, my name's Steve Rimmer, and I am from up north. Yay. 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 We do have a saying up north, actually, and that's um, don't let myself. <laughs> but, <laughs> I am a bit of a recluse. Reckless. I mean, a reckless. Had I been a recluse, you know, this would be progress. So I'm out. But um, yeah, getting into stand up comedy. Um, this is actually the first time I've ever done it. I've never ever been on stage in front of people. And I've been on the internet and I've been um, researching what you should do and things like that. And uh, one of the things that comes up a lot is practice. Get in front of a mirror, pretend you've got a microphone, and just go through your routine, practice and practice. So. That's all well and good till you're at home in your bedroom and the neighbour sees you through the window and they don't hear any of this. All they see is you doing this. <laughs> don't look after their kids anymore. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, I was a kid and um, I've always been a gobby lad. And when I was younger, I'd always rush straight to the front of the queue in front of the ice cream man and he'd look down at me and say, What are you having, lad? And I'd say, uh, I'll have a 69 please. Turns out he was on the register. <laughs> yeah, he'll laugh. I never. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I'll fast forward a little bit now to my adolescence, and I had a bit of a tricky one, to be honest, and uh, what's tricky about it is, I didn't start puberty until I was 17, and it's true, I didn't. And I had to split up with a girlfriend because of it, and the truth is, she kept trying to put her hands down my pants, and I'd combat this by putting on a really tight belt and pushing my belly out, but she'd still persist trying to get in there and there. Uh, I'd be like, no, oh, no, I don't want to come. Thing is, I've never come before in my life. The first time I actually came was the second time we had sex. The first time I just stopped because I was tired. <laughs> but, that's what this is about. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that second time I did actually uh, reach the magical orgasm. Remember that fellas, the first time you came? We didn't do a lot for a week after that, did we? I, uh, I spent a week just trying to recreate that moment and then... Uh, <laughs> It didn't happen, all I had in the room was covered in the bedroom floor full of tissues with blood on them. Oh. Looked really sore. Oh. But yeah, I soon come to realise... <laughs> don't feel sorry for me. <laughs> I soon come to realise uh, the only way I'm going to reach orgasm is by actually having sex in there. Uh, you know, they say you can laugh a woman into bed and it's got me by it, you know what I mean? So it's, I've done alright. Uh, but I'm going to tell you now why you can laugh a woman into bed from my mind anyway. And it's a thing that I've discovered and it's called IVM, which is involuntary vaginal movement. And basically what I'm thinking is, you're talking to a girl and you're making her laugh and she's giggling away. A diaphragm moves up and down with every giggle and that causes a little bit of a twitch in the uh, <laughs> um, pelvic floor muscles. I know all about women, me. So um, she's laughing away and it might take a few dates and things like that. And, She's giggling, see, she's handsome. <laughs> but, uh, it might take a few dates, but before you know it, you've uh, laughed her into bed, which is uh, all very well and good until 8 o'clock in the morning. She looks over at this and says, uh, you better tell me you're a real good joker, I'm ready the police. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's the first night I've done comedy. It's the first time I've been on stage. And... <laughs> yes! <laughs> but, uh, that's the best I can't get into it. Uh, what more? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shitting myself. But, so, I, I haven't got a real job and Phil's spotlight for me earlier on. I'm actually um, a bomb disposal engineer or EOD engineer for the actual explosive ordnance disposal. And you might think, how do you get into a job like that? Well, uh, I used to be in the army. And there's the thing, whenever you meet someone that used to be in the army, they can't wait to tell you, and it's taken me probably three and a half minutes and I've been holding back, to be honest. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was in the army, and whenever we'd, uh, we'd go on tour, Iraq, Bosnia, you know, Afghanistan, hero. 
But um, we wear this t-shirt on the back just for a laugh say, I'm an EOD engineer. If you see me running, keep up. <laughs> so uh, I wear a super t-shirt. Then you worked it out. <laughs> Took me six years to wear that. <laughs> you kept giving me it. We got my tall wench t shirt. What's that about? But, uh, I wear a silly t shirt these days. It says, If you see me running, don't tell the DSS because I'm only come to port for dodgy knee. So, I mean, if anyone's at it, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I, uh, I have got that job. And I mentioned earlier that I'm a bit of a reckless, and I am, and it's got me into a bit of a disciplinary way. It's something to do with health and safety, not following protocol or whatever. But um, I don't care what they say, if I see a grenade or something that looks like a grenade in the ground and there's women and children around, I'm going to jump on it every time. Bit of a hero, you know. <laughs> so I, um, I'm in this disciplinary and I'm not very good at remembering things, so I like to write everything down and get, get my side of the story straight. So I'm in this disciplinary and the managing director sat there, and there's some woman from HR there, and I've got my project manager Brett next to me, and he's my mate, so, you know, he was in the arm like me, hero. But, um, <laughs> I, uh, they're telling me all this stuff, what I've done wrong, and you're this, you're that, you're that. What do you say for yourself, Steve? So I pick up a piece of paper and I begin to read. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Steve River, I'm from North. <laughs> Thanks for your time, and, um, brilliant. Actually, one thing. <laughs> What comedians do do, I've seen, they sometimes bring a drink up and they have a little drink. I know when it's supposed to be up here for five minutes, so I've left mine there. But uh, there's a problem with leaving your drink there because you know people spike drinks these days. And I'm not really that worried about that, to be honest, because I'm actually uh, immune to date rape. Seriously, I am. I went out the other week, took loads of raw hypno, and nobody fucked me. <laughs> Thanks for the time. I love you. <laughs>